Hello, hello, everyone. Thanks for dropping in. This is Healing Body, Mind, and Soul, Healing Vibes with Ariel. I'm your host, Ariel Asher, and today I have the honor and privilege to be with my new friend, Julia Anderson. You're going to want to lean in, pull up a seat, and hear about Julia's story. Now, I met Julia, this is actually the first time that we're seeing each other face to face on this interview, um, but I read her book and I thought that it would be so great to have her on Healing Vibes with Ariel and to talk to the Body, Mind, Soul audience because uh, it's just so timely. She's overcome so much and really used her own art, her creativity, and really connected into her own source and power to get herself through to the other side from trauma, from grief, from all of that stuff, and really following her heart. I'm so proud of her. And she's got a great book. I'm gonna let her talk about that as well. And she also, as a bonus, sent me a great book as a thank you. Um, I, I, was, I had the privilege of being um, one of the people who was um, writing um, a little review of the book beforehand on her new book that she's just publishing. And as a thank you, being the um, artist that she is, she sends me another book for saying thank you, which is just great. I love, she's just absolutely, absolutely um, prolific. We love it. This one is um, the one that she sent me as a thank you guys. I'll just go ahead and spill the beans on this one. This one is called <laughs> Altars of Healing by her and I just, I, I wanted to put this up front because I wanna make sure that she knows how much I appreciate that she sent that. It's so wonderful. And I, as a spiritual teacher and artist, I, I believe in this using altars to heal space, um, the space within ourselves as well as the space around ourselves. So instead of having me ramble on forever here, let me just go ahead and turn it over to my new friend, construction worker, builder, author, and speaker, Julia Anderson. Thanks for being here today, Julia. Oh, thank you so much, Ariel. This is such a privilege. And thank you for such a generous introduction. Um, it's thrilling. You know, this is the piece about what I love about building. So building, literally, when you're building in construction, is a, such a perfect metaphor for what we're all building together. So we're building together in our communities and professional, personal, and then we're building in our personal lives. And so I love sharing and listening. Um, it's just, it's always an honor to be able to, to talk with people about it because it's, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, Julia, I know because you've read my review, you already know what I think of your book, which I think is just really marvelous. It's called Under Construction. And um, Julia, would you mind telling our, um, give a brief synopsis of the book so that our, um, so that our um, listeners can get a little handle on um, what it is that you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So... I'm really excited. Uh, my book, Under Construction, uh, will be born on the 28th of this month, so so soon. Oh. And and really, it, it, I have two children of my own, and this is the third birth. That's what I say. And it's really the birthing of myself, because what Under Construction is, is the story of how I took a series of what could be considered unfortunate events in my life, I had one of those years of reckoning that some of us, I know I have friends that 2020 has been that year for them, or even right now. Um, 2016 was my year where it was the best of times and the worst of times. And I mean, literally I went through a divorce. I lost my mother and best friend to cancer. And I was unfortunately drugged and sexually assaulted all in one year. Oh so my when you God. Look at that, yeah. When you look at that, it's like, ah, <laughs> you know, and, and oddly, I mean, oddly and not oddly, when I share my story, which is what under construction is, I realize I'm not alone. I'm like, oh my gosh, that seems like a lot. But the more that I share, the more I realize I'm not alone. So many people have so much weight on their shoulders, so much trauma, so much pain body. And so that's why I wanted to share this book 
because um, Ariel, I don't know if I've shared this with you, but one of the things that happened to me when I experienced trauma of this year, I love writing. It's my passion. And I've heard this before when people go through a period of healing from trauma, I lost my ability to write for years. Um, I mean, literally just wasn't there, you know? So it's like, some people would call it an artistic or writer's block, but it wasn't that it just went away. And I was like, Oh, I don't know when it'll ever come back. And, and this book that I've, I'm birthing was the revival of my ability to express myself safely. And so, you know, I took one of those 30 day book writing challenges. Cause I just, nothing was happening. And I was, I, I just wanted to see if I showed up for 30 days at this point in my healing, what would happen? You know, I mean, at that point it was four years after, um, you know, surviving sexual assault and I did it. So I just committed for 30 days and it, it brought me to this point of having this book to share. So that's what this is, is that, you know, sometimes when we look at people, it's like, they must be a superhero. There must be something that happened. And it's like, no, I'm just a lady who, you know, has gone through a lot of ups and downs and has kept trying and that's it. And, and kept showing up. And because of that, I get to be here with you and to share and, um, and to bring my story to the world, to bring healing. Yeah. Well, I think that we're all put on this planet to be guides for each other. And I really like about you, Julia, that you took that experience as an artist would. Okay. I want to underline that in red because I'm an artist myself, uh, you know, and regardless of um, how you express that, I think that there's an archetype that is artist that has us wanting to produce, wanting to make, wanting to build as you, as you did. Um, yeah. But I don't think that it's that unusual that you had that shutdown for four years. Yeah. I see that as the percolation time. <laughs> I think that yeah. I, 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 because, because what I noticed when I read your book and I hope our audience is really listening in and getting ready to, um, to get on Amazon and get that book or to um, reach out and get that book yeah. is that you had the perspective, the perspective that you had was like you took a five, a four year break because you handled it as if you were already healed and you were able to to tell the tale um, uh, from a remarkable from a remarkable perspective and weaving in stories from your youth and weaving in little insights that you came upon like that doesn't happen overnight so i think that you know that percolation must have really done you some good um from i know what it's like because sometimes i'm like uh, you know i my career is an intuitive healing artist and sometimes i'm like intuitive i don't know i don't know where the door is right <laughs> it's like uh, yeah you get but that's because there's a reason that you're not connected yeah there's a reason so something is happening during that um lag time i think yes i actually i want to boast on you too um julia because your book impacted me so much that i did find myself talking about it to um to clients of mine and using um, using snippets and parables of how, what you have overcome, the trauma that you had to um, overcome, right? And I love that you took up building construction. Just what a what a wonderful metaphor to set the foundation for yourself to create your new reality, literally for you and your children. Just super inspiring. Oh, thank you. Do you want to talk about, um, so we know your process, 30 days trial by fire. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> do, you yes. have more to, do you have anything more you want to say to our listeners about that? <laughs> well, you know, it's these leaps of faith. So my background is in teaching. So, you know, I, I had a deep background in uh, teaching, you know, basically pre-K through 12 and all sorts of things around the United States, as a lot of teachers have um, bounced around. I, I loved it. You know, it was a wonderful experience. I learned so much and I love working with youth and, and of all ages because it's so inspiring. And that's really what brought me into construction was that deep in my soul, when I was working with all these kids around the United States, you know, I'd ask them, what do you really want? What's your dream? And they'd share their dreams with me and they were beautiful dreams. And in my own heart, my dream um, that connected to my experience in teaching and learning was to build my own house. 
And that was the thing is that, you know, that part of your mind that shuts you down, that's like, you can't do that. You don't know how to do that. The thing I would never share with my students, I had going on in my own brain. And so what was amazing about going through the first part of my life shift where things were really being brought down, you know, really kind of in a cataclysmic way showing me the what do I want? Deconstruction, yeah, the yes, deconstruction. the deconstruction, part, yeah. absolutely. The demo, right, the grand demo. Um, it was like, Julia, what's in there? And, and that was the part that really brought the story, you know, that's what brings the story forward is when I say, I wanna build, I want to learn to build. It's my right. I deserve this. And saying that to myself and that like literally opened a door into the beautiful part that holds my story that I share. It's it is it's the foundation. It's the scaffolding that brings me through these very challenging moments is that I have a passion. I have a dream and I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep learning even when I stink at it. <laughs> I'm going to keep trying. And, you know, and here I am, I'm in construction still. I love it. You know, I am a builder. I say that here in my community and people respect me as that on many levels because they're like, yeah, we see you building, <laughs> you know, whether I'm wearing my Carhartt overalls or, you know, I'm here talking with you. I am a builder. That's for sure. I love that. I love that. So what's next on your um, agenda? Where, where are you going to take your creativity? What are you, what are you building? What are you working on? Tell us what's yeah. coming up for you. Well, it's, it's so fun, Ariel, because, you know, like I said, there's so many different levels. So I love asking people questions because I'm a very curious person and that helps me. Um, it's helped me heal. It's helped me on so many levels to just be inquisitive. And so I'm always asking people, what do you need to build your dream? Like what, how can I support you in building your dream? Is it a literal thing? So I just recently met a woman who wants to remodel trailers and she's wonderful. And so we just connected and she's like, would you help me create a toolbox? So this was a literal toolbox of things. And I was like, I'd love to, because working in construction, I'll be starting my sixth year in February. Um, I know great tools. And I was like, I, you know, and as a woman that entered construction without owning a hammer, I'm like, now I can guide other women in this, especially, or any new builder. You know, and so I really, that's my focus. And so what's fun is I'm getting a lot of information right now. So I'm saying, okay, where do I need to lean into? What, what are people need from me? How can I be of service? And so I'm in a very, you know, that's what's fun about a book is a book is a calling card to say, how can I be of service to you? You know, and that's what I'm doing right now is I'm in my own new adventure. And so, and then I'll, you know, get a lot of this input and then I'll start offering, you know, creating some really, um, yeah, juicy and rich offerings based on what people are saying they need. And it might lean toward a more spiritual healing practice. It, it might lean towards a more literal building and it might infuse both. Cause that's what I love doing is like, well, I hope it's both. I, I, yeah. I don't like this either or kind of thing. I don't I, either. I'm, well, I'm, I'm very, I'm very much a, a, a spiritual healing artist and a techie. So I like, so yes. I, you know, these dichotomies um, are, are ridiculous. We want to have, we, I think that, um, yes. And, um, yeah. Julia, I want to um, lean into one snippet. Another thing that I was I was saying that I was bragging on to you, um, on you to um, some of my clients and some of the people in my um, circle, because I love what you did. Now, you didn't get the you didn't get the wonderful um, put somebody behind bars moment. But what I loved it was clim the climax was even better. I don't want to give away everything, but it was even be it was even better because the community really came together and what I liked and and I loved that you know a good teacher and I totally understand this part tie it up in my heart that you went back to your students and provided them with community and space because of the exact thing that had um, occurred and you were better able to provide them space literally and figuratively um, can you talk a little bit about um, what I'm alluding to here so that my audience knows what I'm talking about <laughs> Yes. Well, so it's a beautiful part of, like you said, it's never an either or. So even though 
in part of my story at this time, I stepped down from a position officially teaching. What you never step down from are those intimate relationships that you build with your students. And as my mom was losing her battle with cancer, I needed to attend, wanted to attend completely. So I needed to step down from teaching, which started some of this as well. Those relationships were huge to me. So woven through this story is how, yes, you know, in our community here that was shattered from a fact where I went to a local bar where everybody knew my name to have a glass of wine before going to a theater performance. And that's where I was drugged, was in my own community. So some of the breaking down of community saying to the kids I had worked with who were English language learners here, um, not given a lot of opportunity and saying, no matter what, we can create authentic connection together, whatever we've been through, wherever we come from, whatever we lose along the way, there's always that moment where we can rebuild and reconnect. And that's the piece in the story that I love. There's a moment with my students where we have that reconnection and we have that completion where it's like, wherever we go from here, we built a sense of trust that gets taken through. And that's the part is sometimes trust gets broken for different reasons in our lives, but we can rebuild, you know, and we can build something that might not have been there before in someone's life. And we can do both things together and that it's possible. It's possible in a little community like where I live outside of Seattle. It's possible anywhere in the world, no matter what. And I think that's the part in my story I love is that no matter what, it's possible, you know, no matter how many things come down, go wrong, go right, whatever it is, it's possible and just keep believing, keep working, you know, and that's coming from the place of love. You know, that's my, everyone's like love wins, which obviously I didn't coin, but I use it all the time with my mm. kids, people in my life that I, people buy me love wins things all the time. And I'm like, yes, it does. Because even in our darkest hour, love wins. It will win in a way we might not even know. You know, and that's um, that's in being a teacher, being a builder. It's all the same. It's working together, collaborating. Mm, mm, mm. So you don't know this about about me, but I have a background in theater arts. Um, oh yeah. God. So 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 you really touched my heart with all, on all levels with this story. So many there were so many touch points in the, in the story, and so I've taught as an artist in schools for many yeah. years, doing different things at different times in my life. Um, because I'm a I'm I'm that kind of person, free moving, you know, and and where am I needed um, to serve? But you really, um, you really touched some chords with me, and also spending some of my formative years in the Pacific Northwest, in um, in mm -hmm. Bremerton and Port Orchard, mm -hmm. in the um, in the Puget Sound area. So, so all of those things sort of really um, put me in the headspace of being a fan from the from the get go. Mm -hmm. But I do want to, um, but I do want to say that your story is going to be so beneficial for so many people. The power of the community. The power of the promise, Julia, you promised those kids and I love that you tied it up in that beautiful package and some of them had forgotten that the promise was made to them and and because you're um, operating from your heart and from that integrity place, you know what a wonderful gift to deliver to them, even when they had forgotten the promise that was made to them. Um, by you. You just, yeah, um, you're just a important. great shining example of a great big shining heart, Julia. We <laughs> love it. Well, we thank love you. It. <laughs> um, so if, uh, if there's anybody, if there's anybody who's sitting at home and, and um, they feel that there's that your story may resonate with them, or maybe they've had similar trauma or anguish that has been um, put in their path, an yeah. obstruction in, in their path, you know, ho hopefully not stopped them. What would be your advice to them, Julia? Oh, I love that question. Um, you know, one of uh, my great teachers um, told me this and in the sense it was, I, I am a joyful person. So in my heart, I feel joy. And that when I've gone through this trauma and this, this experience of pain, 
to say something to myself that has helped me immensely. And it's to say that I am joy and I have a companion of grief. I have a companion of sadness or a companion of anger because I've experienced that too. And I love that because it allows me to still be me no matter what I've gone through. And because, you know, a lot of times when we go through something traumatic, we become identified with it as us. And it's like, you know what, what I've experienced isn't me, but it is my companion. And it's my companion that needs my attention. It's my companion that needs help. And, and just that's one of the greatest gifts that I've been given because it's allowed me to continue to be myself no matter what's going on. And that, yeah, that never diminishes my strength. And it also allows me to get help. Because I think that's the best thing is that, oh my gosh, let's help each other. Let's get help. Let's feel worthy of help. Like that's, I give myself permission to be helped right now. I mean, I had to do that in this, in my story many times to say, oh, I need help. (laughs) So that's a way of, I think, you know, looking at yourself where you're so worthy to have this companion that needs attention to get some help. So yeah. Well, I'm glad that you spoke up for your inner, inner angry part piece. And I'm glad oh, yeah. because you, because I think you were very well vindicated. And I think that, it, you know, it must have blew, blown your mind that your community was able to, um, to bring some sense of justice and protection to your area and that, and just to see your community banding together and, and, um, and rising up. It's really, it's really inspiring, Julia. So if everybody wants to get your book, where can they get hold of you, Julia? Well, the greatest hub right now is to come straight to my website because I'm putting out a lot of information. So um, Julia Harriet, which with Harriet, it's always one of those tricky. So Julia, H-A-R-R-I-E-T dot com. And, you know, I'm always putting up new things there and I'm going to really be um, doing so more and more um, ongoing. So that's a great spot. You can reach out to me. It's very easy to send me a message. So if you have something where you'd like support or resources or ideas, or, or you want to build something, it's a great place to shoot me, um, you know, any kind of a connection and I'll write you right back as quickly as I can. Um, and, and find me on social media there. So it's a, it's a perfect hub that way. And I do a lot of blog posting because I love writing about building too. So um, it's a fun place to just check in with me and see what's upcoming. I love that you are locked and loaded into your, um, into your passion and your purpose, Julia. I hope that you keep producing more, um, more meaningful art, more um, beautiful structures, and, um, and helping people who are in trauma get some structure for how they can, they can uh, get themselves out, what they can build to get themselves out. So trying to keep with your metaphor there. Yeah. Julia, I wanna thank you so much for spending a little time with us on Body, Mind, Soul TV and taking the time to come in. Um, I'm sure there's some, there's some building project that's got, um, that is calling you at the moment that you're taking time out. And I just really wanna honor you. Um, and say thank you from the bottom of my heart for um, sending me a little gift. And thank you for spending some time with me and my audience. Oh, thank you so much. It's been a privilege. And yeah, please connect. You know, anyone that feels inspired, I'd love to hear from you. And, and I appreciate you so much. Thank you. All right. So everybody go check out juliaharriet.com. Okay, everybody, I think we're going to wrap it up. I'd like to stay with her all day long. I think she's just great, but you can reach out to her at juliaharriet.com. Or if you would like to reach out to me, arielasher.com or bodymindsoul.tv. Until next time, everyone, do what makes your heart sing.